when I moved to North Carolina, I printed like a thousand business cards and at the bottom of the business card wrote professional race car driver. Jimmy Johnson joining us here in the Freak Nation. And Jimmy, I got to be honest, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. And to this freaking day, I misspell your first name as a Y for Jimmy Johnson versus Jimmy. I know it. How many times has, has does that happen to you still to this day, Jimmy? So many, obviously. And honestly, I had a heartbreaking moment with the Y being on my name. My very first die cast car. So excited for it to come out when I was in the Bush Grand National Series. And um, we approved the imagery for the car and it had my signature on the top of the car. But the outside of the box, I didn't know what it was going to look like. And sure enough, in big block letters, it's Jimmy with a Y. And I was heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> and then to add to this, I've been able to meet Mr. Johnson a few times. And the most recent time I met him, he said, man, you're messing things up for me. <laughs> I said, really? Why is that? And he said, well, for all these years, everybody spelled my name correctly. And then you come along. And now occasionally I get an IE on the end of my name. Right. So I, I felt good about that. I well, just want to, I mean, it's just my personality, but I want to correct people in tweets. It drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh. Hold on one sec. You're going to love this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's going on here, man? He's going back to the secret room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to get another bite of that steak. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Interrupting Jimmy at lunchtime. Uh-oh. No, no. My oh. helmet bag, right? So right. Uh-huh. for the weekend. And this is how they spell. Oh, there it is. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Your own team. Wow. Yep. But Holy hey, I've been called cow. way worse, so I'll take it. Well, yeah. Um, are you right. named after somebody in the family? Not in the family, but yes, my dad's close friend I was named after, and his name was spelled J-I-M-M-I-E. Wow. So you opened the door for this, Jimmy Johnson, as one of your biggest fans. If I was a gambler, I'd be a millionaire now all the times that I said you were going to win the championship. <laughs> but you opened the door to the Bush series, and uh, I, whenever I think of you in the Bush series, I think of you dancing on the styrofoam blocks at Watkins Glen. Yeah. After seven championships, you got a better dance step than uh, what you displayed that day, that day? Yeah, that was, that was quite a day. What's funny is the next year I came back, there was a guy driving around in a pickup truck with pieces of foam that were broken up and selling them, saying this is the, the foam that Jimmy Johnson hit. And I was so excited. I thought the guy might give me a free chunk of foam. And he didn't believe me that I was Jimmy Johnson and maybe pay 20 bucks for a block of foam. I have it framed and it's in my office at home. I was like, I got to have a piece of this. And who knows if it was really from the wreck or not, but I, I have a piece of foam. So the guy was trying to make money off of you and didn't know who you were. Yeah, right. (laughs) Oh, yeah, sure. You're Jimmy Johnson. 20 bucks. I'm like, all right, fine. (laughs) That's the best. (laughs) Well, Jimmy, a lot's changed from your NASCAR days to now IndyCar. And I read something about you completely changing your workouts even. And you are that guy who carries a hand grip. Whoa. Yeah. The, the grip strength of these cars, required to drive these cars, is out of control. Um, you know, when you get in your car, if, if you have, uh, if it's not a push button car, just turn the ignition on and, and feel the weight of the steering when the steering wheel unlocks. Um, that's no power steering, and that's what these cars have. And the faster you go, the more force that you put through the wheel and curbs, bumps, all the little indifferences on a track, that kickback. Uh, requires quite a bit of grip strength. So it's been an eye-opener to me, the the intensity and the physicality of the IndyCar. How long did it take you to get used to all the monkey motion of the open wheel car right there by your uh, front feet? Did Did you get used to that right away? No, I'm still not used to it. It is, it's so foreign to me. Um, to be able to see my tires, if I could see my tires in an NASCAR vehicle, I'd hit quite a few things. So <laughs> it is, uh, it's way different. Is there anything that translates from either NASCAR days or off-road days? or Let's just throw Supercross in there as well. 
Very little. Um, <laughs> right. And I know at some point the worlds will come closer together for me. And I experienced this from off-road to, to stock cars. In the beginning, uh-huh. stock cars were so foreign. But then eventually I learned how to, how to drive them. And, and my dirt background showed up for me in, in NASCAR. And I feel like that moment will happen here. It's just so hard to get the seat time. Um, I've had 10 yeah. days ever in a stock car. Five of those were full test days. The other five days are little 45-minute practice sessions and and a short race that you you have. So I, I need more laps, and it's tough to be a rookie in this era of time. One, through budgets and, and the teams and sanctioning bodies being aware of, of the expense to go racing. And then the COVID era has taken a toll on, on rookies as well. And although I'm 45 years old and, and not a rookie in many minds, um, it is a totally different world for me. You brought up being a rookie. You brought up the the craziness going from stock cars to IndyCar. And there was the quote several weeks ago how Danica had to bite her tongue going from IndyCar into NASCAR. Do you think she would have bit her tongue now, Jimmy, given w- how far we've come in society, the recognition of women in sports and women can speak up without recourse? Do you think if she said something today that there would be as much blowback as there would have been? back then? Well, I think society is evolving and changing and I'm not sure it's where it needs to be yet. And I'm not sure it's, it's equal. Um, as a father of two daughters, you know, I I hope that that, that world is is very close by. Um, I don't think it should matter gender, uh, color of your skin, um, your beliefs should affect your opportunities in life. So, um, you know, the world, the, the world is evolving and changing. It's great to see that. So I'm happy for the progress, but I still think we all know there's a long mm-hmm. way to go. How has educational. Any, go ahead, Steph. Has there been any uh, uh, hazing for Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> your seven championships? When you get into the garage, a lot of drivers say, yeah, prove this, kid. Uh, any hazing going on? You know, Dixon put student driver on the back of yes. the golf cart the other yes. day. So. I still owe him. Thank you for reminding me. (laughs) The good news is you still have tires on that golf cart. I'm sure you heard the stories from last year. I mean, but Tony Kanan is your, is your co-driver in this car. Come on. Carvana is completely safe because Tony is the biggest prankster in the entire pit area. So you've got some, some good mojo on your side. I would think. I do. And what's wild is Dario and Tony both have told me stories of pranks they've pulled off and are encouraging me to keep this tradition alive. (laughs) <laughs> no, I just, I can't, I can't imagine putting so much effort into a prank. I mean, it, 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 they're pretty, pretty extensive. Yeah, cutting apart Tony Kanan's ten thousand dollar trek bike—that's a prank. Yes, I'm surprised they didn't go to blows. I'm surprised they didn't end up fighting on that deal. Wow. <laughs> Jimmy, growing up in Southern California, and the off-road days that you, that you had. Uh, was there a strong desire to get into open wheel prior to stock car or was it just whatever can help put food in my mouth and eventually in front of my, in front of my family at the time? No, for me, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, being on the West coast, Rick Mears, Roger Mears, Robbie Gordon, um, you know, all those guys transitioned from off-road racing into, into IndyCar. There were IndyCar races nearby, um, Cal Wells with his race team, you know, started mm-hmm. establishing in the area. That was my focal point. And, and to my surprise, the manufacturer I was driving for and guided me through my career so much was pulling out of IndyCar. And I went oh. to Long Beach Grand Prix for one of my meetings, thinking that I was going to have a Trans Am ride offered to me. And then hopefully after that would be Indy Lights and then IndyCar. And when I sat down in this meeting, they said, look, we're pulling out of, of open wheel. And if you want a future in motorsports, you need to move to the East Coast and figure out NASCAR. And uh, not long after that, I had a one-way ticket to North Carolina and been there ever since. Oh my goodness. So this this whole IndyCar thing, oh, by the way, <laughs> this is how oh, yeah. we do interviews at home. <laughs> this awesome. is Henley, Henley, Jimmy. <laughs> so your, your path was going to be open wheel. It changed obviously with Toyota pulling out. But Jeff Gordon was the one, if, if we read through all the stories here, Jeff Gordon kind of mentored you once you got to NASCAR, right? And then he was the one that helped push you through in your career. Yeah, he did. I was very fortunate to have quite a few help mentor me along the way. Um, and when I go to the, uh, the off-road days, having the Herzogs help me um, race in the Midwest in their off-road truck in the late 90s. 
they bought the ASA team that I drove for. They then bought and started the Bush Gray National team that I drove for. And then uh, got a fly buzz in the tower here. And then uh, <laughs> that's when the conversation happened with Jeff Gordon. And that's through their Bush program is how I was able to race Jeff and be noticed. And uh, so grateful for many steps along the way. And, uh, and, and just people believing in me and giving me that chance. So where I'm trying to go with this is people, the last several years have been crazy for so many people, especially the last year with COVID and people losing their jobs. You, you, you have a focus about what you think your life is going to be. And then suddenly, uh-uh, that's not going to happen. Whether something's pulled out from underneath you or another change happens, but you still make things happen because you were still passionate about motorsports and you still surrounded yourself with the right people and things still went forward. I think it's a great story. No, I appreciate it. I, uh, you're right. I mean, there, there were many in, in motorsport as a driver, doors are closing all the time and, and you have to figure out how to separate yourself from the crowd. And, and literally it's going to sound kind of cheesy, but it was very effective. When I moved to North Carolina, I printed like a thousand business cards and at the bottom of the business card wrote professional race car driver. I would go <laughs> and sit in the restaurants where the team members would eat lunch, show up early, pass out business cards, collect business cards. Back then we were faxing one another and, and I would have all of the uh, post-race press releases, fax to these team managers and just worked it. You know, I didn't have a sponsor. I didn't have the money to go racing, but I had money to buy business cards and I made sure that I was always top of mind to people. And in the end, you know, I feel like it helped, helped them look my way versus others, you know, those key moments. Wow. Jimmy Johnson, that opens that sentence opens up a lot of stuff. You bought one a one way ticket. You had a lot of confidence. And a lot of guys in your position, when they get to North Carolina, they'll sweep out garages, sleep on floors, on couches, the whole couch surfing thing. <laughs> Did you have enough confidence to go beyond all of that and to launch this career anyway? I believed in myself for sure. I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I honestly, it, motorsport has been such a passion to me that if it didn't mean I was a driver, I felt like I would be on a team somewhere that, that it, it wasn't a dead end road for me. And, you know, I had made this decision to travel, um, you know, mid to late teens and, and it's probably 18 or 19 when I left home to move, move to North Carolina. And I, I was I was all in, you know, I was going to find a way to, to make a living in motorsport. I'd hope that it was being a driver, but there weren't any guarantees. So uh, Seven, wait, wait, it. wait, wait. Seven championships later, <laughs> you could honestly say that you were prepared to do something else other than drive. What in the world could that have been? <laughs> yeah, you just never know how it's going to work out. I mean, what's really interesting and kind of helps prove my point, although I don't think you want to believe me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> is, uh, in the rookie class for uh, my Bush Grand National Series Rookie of the Year, Rodney Childers was one of the rookies I was competing against. And Rodney has turned into a, a multi-time, you know, Cup Series champion as a crew chief. There you he go. wanted to be a driver, but he's there as a, as a crew chief. So you just never know where your opportunities are going to take you. Wow. Jimmy, let's wrap this up. What's it going to take to get you in – the Indy 500. Of course. You got to throw that out there, huh? I'm surprised it took this long. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> you've known us long enough. Right. No, I, there is more of an opening than there ever has been. Um, you know, I, I think the next realistic step is to test on an oval and, and see what that experience is like. Watching the crashes that have happened since the aero screen has gone on. Um, I think we, we all see the impact that it has and just how much safer it's made the sport. So, you know, that, that puts me in a window now where I'm, I'm willing to try one on an oval by myself and, and see what that experience is like and uh, take it from there. And you realize if you ever do do that, and I'm just going to assume that you would win the Indy 500, you would then need to become a Formula One driver and then win Monaco. I mean, because you want to get the triple crown eventually. I love where your head is on this. I do. But there, I think there's too much gray in my beard for uh, an opportunity in Formula One. Well, it would match the color scheme on the Mercedes car. Oh, okay. The silver arrows. Like you'd, get, you'd fit perfectly. I should keep my optimistic point of view that I had when I was young. I Boom. bring up a great point. Right. I need to keep that work ethic going. I need to get some more business cards and head to Europe. And pass it Damn. Off. 
greatness. I am a race car driver. I promise. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, it's always fantastic. We, you take time to join us here in the Freak Nation, buddy. Good luck to you. We'll see you later on down by the track. All right, bud? I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.